How did he get such a, such a influence? How come he was sent to Damascus with letters, supposedly? If he was sent with letters to Damascus. Why would the high priest entrust anything to Paul <coughs> or Saul? These are questions we'll leave in abeyance. Well, Philip is now introduced, and uh, he goes to Samaria. And so now we're going to get the confrontation with Simon Magus. Why is Philip introduced here? Philip is going to have the first confrontation with Simon Magus. Philip will appear again in the um, once more after this episode when um, Paul goes to Caesarea right before the Jerusalem Council in chapter 21. And there it turns out he's living in Caesarea and he has um, four virgin daughters who are prophetesses. We'll hit that one later on when we get to it. But um, at the moment, this is basically all we have about Philip. This and his conversion of the Ethiopian queen's eunuch here. But a certain man like nine named Simon had been using magical art in the city before. Uh, what city? City of Samaria. Uh, Samaria is usually uh, an area. It also has a city sometimes called Samaria. It was uh, had previous names uh, before that in the Bible. But let's leave that as it may. So Simon Magus is presented as being in a city in Samaria. Now in the Pseudo-Clementines, we never get him in Samaria. But Pseudo-Clementines says that he was born in Samaria in a city called Gita. So the Pseudo-Clementines have uh, precise information about Simon, that he's actually a Samaritan, and that he's a disciple of John the Baptist along with another person called Dositheus. I can put that on the board here for you. So, both Simon Magus, so this is much more precise information, again, to my mind, than what we have here, and Dositheus are two students of John the Baptist, and the Pseudo-Femtines also know John's, John's doctrine, I mean, Simon's doctrine, which is very much this primal Adam thing I've been uh, telling you about that keeps you popping up everywhere, and the standing one, and so on. It's in those things I gave you from the pseudo Clementines. You can read it if you, if you want. Uh, but the pseudo Clementines is not the only one who knows. Other church fathers know this. I think Irenaeus knows this. Ir Irenaeus, rather. And uh, one or two others, I think even in Eusebius, has picked it up from them when he comes to talk about these things. That he knows that Simon Magus is born in a city in Samaria called Gita. So they know, and then Simon Magus comes from Samaria. The confrontations don't occur in Samaria. Now the closest city to Samaria on the seacoast is this seaport called Caesarea, named after Caesar by Herod and founded. So here we go. So there's a problem. Everyone was listening to him. He, uh, again, we have this description. He thought himself to be great, the same way that uh, Gamaliel was pre presented as talking about Judas the Galilean and Theudas. And he talks about the power of God, and that's true. This great power and so on is in the Pseudo-Clementines as part of Simon's doctrine. And also other people who continue in about this teacher that we'll may hear about at some point called El Kazai. And that's Aramaic for the great power. Have this idea of the power and so on, which is something you should keep an eye on, this idea of the power. Again, if you read the Sutra Clementines, you'll get more information about that. And he also knew magical arts. And Philip was preaching the kingdom. Simon was also a believer, too, and was baptizing people. So you see, again, all these disciples of John the Baptist, basically. And the apostles heard that Samaria was receiving the word of God. They sent Peter and John, again, Peter and John, no James, to join them. And they laid hands on people. 
and they received the Holy Spirit, line 18. And when Simon saw the Holy Spirit was given them by laying on hands, he offered them money. Give me the power. So again, the power vocabulary. And now it's an issue of money. Uh, something to do with money is the problem between them. And Peter says, may your money be destroyed. Something of the Judas Iscariot situation we heard earlier about the ill-gotten money. You shouldn't have any share in these things. Repent of your wickedness. And Simon, line 24, answers that. And that's it. And that's it. That's the end of the Simon Magus thing. We don't know what happens, where he goes, what the outcome is, whether he started being a Christian, whether he didn't be a Christian, or anything. That's it. That's six of uh, ten lines in Acts. The Pseudo-Clementines is a whole novel about this that goes on for about 150 pages. So there's something much more that is beneath the surface here. I don't know what it's all about. Simon goes to Rome, Peter goes to Rome, they have confrontations there. I, I don't know the whole thing, but this is <coughs> clearly a very superficial presentation of the issue. Here. And not very depth, and again, dismissive. Where would this be written? Now, this is written much later, I think. I don't, can't see this written before 100 AD or so. I can just a surmise. I mean, this is information that's already been digested and you know, basically thrown away as uh, insignificant. Well, we f now follow uh, uh, um, Philip preaching in the Samaritans. I don't know if the Samaritans ever were converted this time to Christianity. I have no idea. But anyway, Philip has an angel speak to him, line 26. And he says, go towards Gaza. He goes to Gaza, but he never gets there. In the end, he gets to Caesarea. Well, Caesarea is the closest place to to Samaria. Why didn't he just go straight to Caesarea? Gaza is the gateway, as we now all know, to Egypt. It's on the way to Egypt. And I, I'm going to try to uh, go into this a little further next time, but let's just finish how it's presented here, then we'll go home. And, he, and as he went, he came to an Ethiopian, a eunuch, someone in control of a woman called Kandaki in the Greek, Candace in English, the queen of the Ethiopians. And he was her treasurer, and he had come to Jerusalem to, to worship. And, and he was sitting in the back of his chariot reading the prophet Isaiah. And uh, the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go, go, jump, jump up on the back of the chariot. And running up to him, Philip heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. And he says, do you know what you are reading? And uh, he said to Philip to come and sit down. And he was reading from 